I'm Neil Bickford, and I'll be talking about the connection between mobile runs and Turing machines. Uh, so I'm sure everyone here has heard of mobile runs. Uh, if not from this talk, probably from Jim Prop's talk. Uh, really, the only requirement for them is for them to move marbles, which is a bit of an oversimplification, all things considered. Uh, they're a bit more complicated. Um, typically, they're made up of many individual submodules, from uh, various sorts of ramps to pachinko machines, even. Um, and the question which really motivated this talk is, with all their complexity, is it possible to construct a marble run computer? Um, so, just to clarify, I really mean, by computer, I really mean more of an Altair 8800 than a MacBook. Um, you'll get some switches, maybe you'll get some lights to show that something happened, but you're not getting a 1080p graphical display. Um, Turing machines, I may as well introduce them, are sort of a model of things like the Altair. Uh, they're essentially equivalent in power. So, People have actually researched this problem before. Uh, there's a company named Evil Mad Scientist Labs, which came out with the Digicomp 2. It's about this uh, four foot by eight foot marble machine, which actually uses pool balls, and um, it uses switches. And it can do a surprising number of things, including addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, etc. But it's not quite a universal computer for the same reason that I don't say, oh, I don't need any of those fancy servers. I have a pocket calculator. That said, marble runs, at least in that very general definition, can compute anything. All you need to say is, well, my marble run just so happens to look like a pool ball table with a lot of individual obstacles. And then you get something called the billiard ball model, which was proved in the 1980s, I think, uh, to be able to, simu to simulate anything. So there are a lot of things you can do. When you think of a, when you think of a marble run, of marble run, you don't typically think of a pool ball table. Um, usually what you think of is something like this. Let me quickly just exit so now I can show the video which wasn't loaded. Uh, oh well. So usually think of, there are a few main elements which show up again and again. There are essentially these elevators which all they need to do is move marbles up. There's switches which ultimately move left and right. Uh, these ones are going to be deterministic and like gym props. That you of course have to have ramps to move things from one place to another. And finally there are outputs, which in the case of this machine, uh, go right back to the main to the main ramp. That said, it, I'll be talking about outputs when they actually exit the mobile machine. I suspect the tech museum isn't too big on losing pole balls on time, so that's why they're not typically seen. And finally, we'll be restricting everything to only one marble. Uh, this makes things a bit more interesting. For one thing, the marble has no memory, unsurprisingly. So you have to do a lot of bookkeeping for it. So with all of these restrictions in place, it's a big question as to whether it can still compute. There are many reasons why. Uh, the toggle switches look like memory since they can sort of store a bit. You can go left or right. Although every time you try to read that bit, it sort of flips and that's a problem. Uh, signaling is trivial. You're literally moving things from one place to another. You don't have to worry about crossovers, which is a big deal because in traditional computational complexity proofs, uh, they're usually in the biggest part of it for whatever reason. Uh, this is a 3D problem, so I can just say, oh, no, I don't have to worry about that. And finally, many, many other systems can run arbitrary programs, from Conway's Fractran uh, to even the problem of getting out of a warehouse, surprisingly enough. To put it another way, take the proverb, if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and swims like a duck, then it is probably a duck. Or it could just be a really good decoy. So, so the question, are one switch marble runs able to compute? The answer is sadly no, um, unless NP equals P space, which I'll quickly digress into. If you have a general marble run, you're generally asking a question about it. Uh, typically, these questions are like, does this program halt, or what is the output of this program? In the case of marble runs, it is sufficient to ask, if I drop a marble into this machine, will I ever get my marble back? So basically, all you need to do is label each of the tracks, and then that turns into a system of equations. And it turns out that's fairly simple to solve. And the problem's actually, uh, a generalized version of the problem is actually NP-complete. So what is the next simplest model? Because this, all things considered, 
could be considered trivial by someone who likes saying that word a lot. Interestingly enough, if we have two of these toggles and we sort of gang them together using a single rod uh, so that they always have the same state, the resulting model is capable of simulating a computer. And I'll just run through this very quickly. Uh, here's a useful gadget which you can make right away. It acts like a memory cell. You can set it, you can ask its value, although it's less useful when you find out that, well, once the moment you try to read its value, it gets set to zero. And if you try to set it twice, it breaks. Uh, even more useful, sorry, that's not working, is the end switch. Essentially, if you have two of these switches, you can simulate n of these switches linked in a row. Uh, it's a bit more complicated. You can sort of see lines up there. Um, it's essentially just three modules linked in a row with sort of two cycles, and I should mention that I'll have all of the slides on my blog, so if you actually want to go through these, uh, it's a bit much to take in the, in the six minute talk, but you can view it all up there. So each of the modules is, all it really needs to do is toggle that long switch in the middle. That said, you have to toggle all of the long switches in the middle, and there's a lot of bookkeeping you need to do around that, uh, which is where the other three switches come from. However, once you have that done, you can essentially access, set, and read a single bit from just about anywhere if you have sufficiently many of these modules joined together, uh, which allows you to do a lot of stuff. The rest of the constructions are a bit more complicated. Uh, this one does just a function call, and I'll sort of skip through them. It's so that allows you to call anything from anywhere, and this can store any arbitrary value. So. All you really need to do now is just take the definition of a Turing machine, which is basically you read in the tape, you read in the state, you choose what uh, your new tape and state are, and then you loop that over and over, and sometimes you halt. Turn that into a slightly more general form where you have setting and reading things, and then all you really need to do is substitute enough of these constructions to the point where nobody can actually read what's going on. But that said, this works. Once again, nbigford.wordpress.com. Uh, and it turns out this is a bit infeasible. Um, for that three state six cell busy beaver, which was thing in the last slide, if I were to completely expand it, it would involve 259 single switches, 852 double switches, and 376, uh, 756 paths. You're not going to find any of these out in the Apple Store either. Uh, it's not a substitute for a laptop. In fact, if you wanted to make one of these with four gigabytes of memory, uh, you would need something about a fifth of the diameter of the sun. <laughs> okay. Now I hasten to point out, this is still smaller than Graham's number. Uh, it runs at approximately one nanohertz, or one operation every three years, uh, or once in three blue moons, if you're into that sort of thing. That said, it is still useful, and there are some neat results you can get from it. Uh, yes, they can run out of any program. It's still a bit impractical. And moreover, suppose you have a system, any system, which has these two requirements. It can move an object from any place to any other, and it can emulate a double switch. Then, not only can the system simulate a computer, uh, you can de um, you can wire that system up so that it only halts uh, or throws a marble out of the machine if, say, three mil hypothesis is false, or if you can even simulate the game of life. So that's about it. Thank you very much. Uh, here are two extra questions.